the Lord. Amen. Amen. God has been so good to us. Amen. Sometimes we take we, we take for granted the things that He is doing in our lives. Amen. We take for granted the little blessings, amen, that He's doing in our lives. Amen. But we need to stop sometimes and just remember. Amen. Who God is, what His purpose is in our lives. And the ultimate thing is we need to remember that he has given us that hope, that blessed assurance that one day this world's going to be over, right, guys? Amen. Everything that we're, we're, we're egging up to be doing here, everything that we're doing right now is for a purpose and for a reason. Amen. I want to be with God one day. Amen. How many just want to go to heaven? Praise God. I know we all do. Praise God. Well, guess what? As long as you keep on holding on, Paul says like this. He wants us to endure to the end. Amen. Endure to the end. And we will get our reward. Praise God. Hey, let's worship together. Let's praise God together. Let's lift up his name together. For he is worthy to be praised.
Amen. The Bible lets us know that we need to be a light. <laughs> you know what? That's a prayer of mine. I said, God, listen, I just want people to see you through me. Amen. Amen. I want to be a vessel for him. Amen. Amen. Fill us up. Praise God. Because if you don't have them in you, what, what are they going to see? Amen. You can be seated. Praise God. God's an awesome God. Amen. And I thank God for his word. Amen. And only those that really study and examine and, and really try to feed on his word will understand what God's trying to say to us in his word. Amen. We have to realize that the Bible is a living word. Amen. How many times you read a passage four, five, six times over and every time you read it, it said something different to you. Amen. That's God feeding you, filling you up. Amen. With what you need to get by in this world. Praise God. Praise God. I know there's a lot of unrest going on with a lot of things that's going on in the, 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 the system today, the voting and the election. But listen, we need to put that stuff aside. Amen. Like I tell everybody, listen, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't go up with any party. Amen. You know why? Because this stuff, the Bible says it's going to pass away. So why should I put my hopes and my fears and my desires and my emotions in what's going on down here? Yes, it's going to affect me while I'm here. But listen, I got treasure stored up. <laughs> I got treasure stored up in heaven. Amen. Amen. That's where my desires are. Yeah. So yes, this stuff doesn't get it. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me emotionally. Amen. Praise God. But there are people, Lord, are today that um they are they are going through it today. Amen. There are people that are distressed and depressed. Amen. With different different turnouts of this election. Amen. Let's pray for peace in this world. Yeah. Let's pray for peace in this uh, country. Yeah. Let's pray for peace in our city. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just saw something it was probably last night. They said it's not over yet. <laughs> Get you amped up to, for something more that's going to come. Amen. But I'm just telling you right now, don't let that affect you. Don't let that affect you. God's a good God. Yes. He's able to give us that peace, the Bible says. Yes. That surpasses all understanding. Sometimes we don't know what's going on. We don't understand behind the scenes stuff. But you know what? I'm going to trust in God. Amen? I'm going to trust in God that he has everything under control. That he has this whole world in his hand. It doesn't matter. Amen. What the outcome comes of anything that's going on in this world. I'm going to trust in God. Praise God. Amen. I don't have no requests up here today, but I know this morning. There was needs throughout this week. Um, Brother Ralph, how are you feeling today? Much better. Much better. Amen. I'll take that. Praise God. Praise God. He had a, um, some pain in his body this week, and he posted it on the website, on our uh, group chat. Amen. I know that we were in prayer for that this week. Amen. And he said he feels much better. Praise God. Let's give God thanks for that. Praise God. Amen. I love to hear the... Um, the, 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 the praise request. Amen. They're, that's our ammunition, guys. That's our ammunition. When people say, hey, I had a need, but God took care of it. Praise God. There was another one this morning that Brother LeBron said. He said, hey, we, I came in yesterday, and I had a big uh, cut on my body, and I was going to the store to buy some Band-Aids right after the meeting yesterday. We had our men's pancake breakfast yesterday. We prayed for them. We all laid hands on them. And he says he went to the store to buy some band-aids, some extra large band-aids, and some to sort of don't get it. And he says he got home, and later on that day, when he took the old bandage off, that that cup that was, he said, the size of a uh, half a dollar, yeah. that it decreased. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. See, God is our present help in our needs that we're having right now. Yes. It does not matter what you're going through today. You see, if you trust in God, but, and there's something even more important than that. It's trusting and expecting. Yes. See, it's our expectation is where it's going to get God moving. Amen. When you trust and expect God to move, he is going to move on your behalf. Yes. Amen. Praise God for that, that, that praise report. Amen. Go ahead, sis. Yes, yes. Amen. We lost uh, a great uh, warrior. Amen, Brother Irving Baxter in which we're doing the um, end time series every Wednesday night. I encourage you to, if you're not here, to watch online when we um, when we do those uh, on Wednesday nights. Very powerful messages. Amen. Getting us ready for what is to come. Right. 
Amen. Very important stuff. Amen. Amen. It's nothing to do with our salvation, but it's to get, let us know what's going to happen, the signs that's going to be there so that we can be prepared for it. How many of you like to be prepared when something bad's about to happen? Yeah. Amen. I like to have that core knowledge. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank God for uh, Reverend Baxter. Right. Amen. Who took the time out of his life. Amen. To seek God for it. For these, this knowledgeable stuff, amen, that he's bringing to us. Pray, let's, pray, let's pray for his family. Um, I didn't hear the update on uh, his wife. She also was uh, diagnosed with it as well, the coronavirus. Amen. Let's keep her in prayer. Let's keep the whole family in amen. prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead, brother. It would be absolutely wrong of me if I did not give God all the honor and glory. And I say that. I say this is that just a few days ago, I literally could not move my arm. I, the pain was from my scapula to my shoulder to my neck. I couldn't move my neck. Every time I moved, I felt like a piercing through my chest. Within the last few days of working, it's like the pain subsided, and now I'm able to raise my hand. I'm able to move, and, and I would not be able to move. I dealt with with medication problems, but God delivered me from popping pills and all that a long time ago. Yeah. I still will not give room for the enemy for that. Yeah. But I know one thing of two days of that, the, I told the Lord, I, I need this gone. One, I can't afford it. And number two, I know you still can. Yeah. Long story short, God is able. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God gets the glory. When the doctors can't, my God can. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Woo, he's awesome. He's awesome. I'm, I'm ready to go to God in prayer. Amen. Because I'm ready for a victory. Amen. Victory is mine. Amen. If you believe that, you will receive it. Amen. Can we stand and go to God in prayer? And let's go expect an answer today. You heard the needs. You heard the situations, the challenges that many are facing today. But let's give it over to God today. Lord, we're trusting in you right now, God. We're trusting, Lord, that you have everything under control. We're trusting, Lord, that the things that we cannot control, Lord, we're giving it to you. And we know, God, that you are going to take it, Lord, from this point, God. The things that the doctors cannot do, God. Lord, the diagnosis that they give us, Lord. Lord, you have the last say. You are my God. You are my creator. You are my redeemer. And my hope lies in you, Lord. You have done so much for us, God. Lord, you are victorious, God, on everything that you do. You have never lost a battle. That's why I want to be on your team, God. I want to be on your side, God. Lord, you are victorious, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. For your mercy, God, that you have towards your people. Lord, we need you today, God. We need your mercy, God. We need your kindness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the compassion that you have towards us, Lord. Oh, we are nothing without you, Lord. You are great, God. And greatly to be praised this morning. Lord, we pray for the Baxter family, God. We pray for the Jewish family, God. Lord, that only you can give, God. Lord, we pray, God, that all those that are suffering today, Janice today, Lord, that's struggling, God, from pancreas problems, Lord, this morning. Lord, we're praying, God, for an intervention. Uh, we're praying, God, for you to step in. Uh, we're praying, God, that you would give her healing in her body, God. We know that it's true. Lord, that you're able. We know that there's nothing too hard for you, God. Lord, hear all the problems, all the situations. Lord, that we're having today, God. And we're praying, God, for your touch. Uh, for all those that need direction, Lord. All those that need you, God, to give them, Lord, some sort of answer to what their life holds. Lord, bless them today, God. Bless them, Lord. Give them, Lord, exactly what they need to know that your hand is in their life, God. We thank you, Lord, in advance for all that you're doing. And we give you the glory because you are you. Are the only one that deserves it, God. We love you and give you the praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? For everything that He's done for you. For every victory that you have went through. For every challenge uh, that you thought was impossible. That you took it to God. And He delivered you out of it. Oh, saints, don't forget that. Don't forget that because those are the times 
that's going to encourage you, Thank you Lord. to keep on keeping on. It's so easy to throw in the towel. Yes. Amen. It's so easy to say, God, I used to trust in you, but my needs are big and I'm just getting tired of waiting. But see, those that wait and endure to the end, it's those that are going to get their satisfaction. That's going to get their answer. That's going to get their victory. Amen. Do you want victory today? Yes. <laughs> well, guess what? We just sung about that. Victory is ours. Praise God. Can we say that? Victory is ours. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. We are going to take up the tithing and offering. Amen. I, I need victories. A lot of challenges come our way. But listen, we're nothing. We are nothing without God. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you might have. I don't care what kind of prestigious name you might carry around. If you don't have God in your life, you ain't going to be nothing. If you don't have God in salvation, you will not go to heaven. Period. Amen. You can't buy your way into heaven. Your work is not good enough for God. Amen. We need to be. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We need to be baptized in his name. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. See, these are things that we need to desire. If you have family members today that aren't saved, listen. We got a message for them. Ain't that right? We got a message for them. Amen. Give it to them. Praise God. Listen, time is coming to an end. Whether you think that we have another million years here in this life, listen, because um, I, I get upset <laughs> when I hear the scientists talk about different things in this world. Um, it was just recently somebody was talking about some some mountain, um, not the Grand Canyon, but it was another mountain.
purpose for my life. God had something that he wanted, that he had destined for me to, to take a hold of. And you know, you'll never be satisfied in life. You'll never be happy until you are pleasing God. There's no satisfaction like knowing you're in the will of God. There's nothing that compares to that. Praise God. And God wants everybody to feel that because life without it is meaningless and empty. You know, one song says, all I had was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful out of my life. Oh, amen. Something beautiful. Something good. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just entertain his presence for a moment before we go any further. Hallelujah. God, I worship you. I thank you, God, for what I'm feeling right now in your spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way, God, in every life. Hallelujah. Every situation that's been brought to this place, God. You know the burdens that are on the backs of your people. And you know what's going on in every life, God. That our facade doesn't really convey, Lord. But you know us and you understand us better than we know ourselves. Hallelujah. Have your way today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I appreciate everything from last week. We had a great time celebrating our sixth anniversary. God is good. God is good. Thank everybody for your participation, what you did. We, we really appreciate that. When you bring something or you just bring yourself. We, we enjoy, um, you know, the, the tasting those dishes, but also just your company, your fellowship. We, we love everybody. We're so thankful for what God's going to do, what he's doing right now. Praise God. God's always moving, always working. It's just we have to recognize it. And I thank God that we can. Hallelujah. Well, today, if you'll stand and turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. I have one verse here, or two verses actually, for your read, for your hearing um, as our text this morning. And I'll speak to you with, from what God has given me to say today. 1 Peter 3 and 1 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be may without the word be one. By the conversation of the wives. Everybody say conversation. Conversation. Verse number two says, While they behold your chaste conversation. Everybody say conversation. Conversation. Coupled with fear. Praise God. Let's put our Bibles down and talk to God for a moment. Father, we love you. We're so thankful, God, for your word that is a road map. It gives us guidance and directions and insight into your thinking. And how you want us to think, Lord. And how you want us to act. And how you want to control, Lord, our lives for the better of, of us. God, I pray that you would touch today, Lord. And allow me to speak, Lord God, as an oracle of God. Giving truth, Lord God, to your people today. I pray in Jesus' name that you would touch us. Let us be the better for it, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. I want to preach to you from this title, A Winning conversation, a winning conversation. How many people here today like to lose? I don't think anybody really likes losing. I mean, how many people just savor the awful taste of defeat? This is especially true in sports because of the physical and emotional investment uh, that we make, that we place in competitive events. Not to, not to even mention the, the, uh, the pride of showing our superior skill. Even in a board game or a card game, we want to win, right? Well, over the past week in this country and perhaps around the world, I know everybody's eyes are in America, uh, many people can identi identify with a party, one of the parties that are in the race for the White House, or in recent elections, and are experiencing excitement or of winning, or probably the agony associated with defeat, although it's not quite over. 
ourselves to the things that are, that are happening. But no one sets out to lose in a contest, a contest of any importance in our lives. No one sets out and says, I just want to lose. Nobody does that. You know, and in living for God, it can be no different. But there are some things that help us to win, and there are some things that project our loss. You know, some things that portend to our loss. You know, Lyndon B. Johnson, president, former president of the United States, says, Yesterday's is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. Right. Bill Gates has a saying also. He says, success is a lousy teacher. It seduces smart people into thinking that they can't lose. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin had a stab at a losing quote by saying this. It takes many good deeds to build a good reputation and only one bad deed to lose it. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Is that ever true? You know, there's a one eleven. There's a one eleven rule in advertising, or just in um, in word of mouth advertising. So that that rule goes like this: you do one bad thing, and eleven people get it. At least, it's easier for bad news to spread than good news to spread. Right. I don't know why it's like that, but that's the way it is. But the Bible uses this word conversation to depict the behavior that we display in our lives because that's what others see and evaluate and analyze us by, our conversation. And conversation really, it means your behavior. It's, it's a little deeper than just, just how we're talking or we're conversing with one another. The word is more inclusive of the entirety of your life. The, the conversation that your life, you know, figuratively speaks. What sums you up? How can we evaluate? And that's, the Bible talks about your, your conversation. In the Old Testament, it's used twice. And in the New Testament, it's used about 18 times. In every time, it has this connotation. It's talking about how we live our lives, how we behave, how we act, what we do, what we say, how we are to people. It's, it's about how people are picking up on us. Everybody in here, I would think, you want to be a witness for God. Right, right. You want to be somebody that God can use, he can work through. Right. Praise God. And that's God's desire. God's desire is that each one of us be a vessel. And you know something? We all are vessels. And our life is saying something to people that we meet. Everybody is hearing something. Either a losing conversation or lifestyle or the individual behaviors. Or it's a winning one. I want my life to be a winning Amen. conversation. Right, right. Amen. Second Corinthians 3 and 2. Paul says this to the people that he was ministering to in the, in the uh, city of Corinth. He says, you are epistles written in our heart, or letters. The books that were that come after Acts, uh, many of these are letters to dip, address the different churches. And so they're called epistles. But he says of the people, he says, you are our epistles. You know why? Because we are teaching you the word of God and you're living it. Right. So he says, you are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. So people are reading us. And what is our life saying? What kind of conversation is our life giving? Right. What is it saying to people? Is it, is it making it so that a person is admiring the walk that we have and they want to follow after it? Or is it something that says, I don't want to have anything to do with that person? Hmm. It may be the latter. And the reason that they may not want to have anything to do with you is because they're fighting God on their own. You see, God deals with every individual that lights the, lights the earth. Everybody that comes into the earth. God's the, or, he's ordained every person to have a relationship with him. God has created all of He started this whole thing. And so that's why the tragedy of, of things where uh, you know, an abortion takes place, it's, it's a tragedy. There's a life that never, ever got to get lived. 
never got started. It's a tragedy that our, our nation and our world has accepted. But I want my life to give off a beautiful odor to God. Right. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. When your life reflects the teachings that Paul was saying here that we instill in you, you are a letter. It's not even just about what you say. He, you know, the reason that this word conversation is so important and, and as it's uh, defined in the word of God is because it's not just what comes out of your mouth. Because you're not evaluated just by what comes out of your mouth. It's your actions. Right. You ever heard anybody say, do as I say and not as I do? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it doesn't go that way. It doesn't work that way. Right. You can want people to look at certain things that you do and judge you by that. But people are always watching. They are always seeing you. Right. And so what's going to happen in, in their analysis or their evaluation of you is going to be the entirety of you that they see, that they're influenced by. That is what's going to be the thing that's left indelibly marked in their minds. Amen. Praise right. God. Right. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37 and 14. There's two instance, instances where this word conversation is used in the Old Testament. And every time in the Word of God, it's used it just about the same way. There's a couple of different ones that I'll bring out. But here in Psalms 37, 14, it says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. God speaking, of course. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. See, there's, there's a responsibility on our life. Our life. Our life. You know, I don't want to ever just emphasize the event of salvation. Because really, salvation is not an event. Alone. There's a time when we've obeyed God, but then the rest of your life, God is not just turning a blind eye and saying, I'll see you in heaven. Right. It doesn't work that way. Our conversation. And you know something? My life isn't the best it can be right this second. Your life isn't the best it can be right. this second. Right. God's working on all of us. Right. He's right. making us what he wants us to be. Right. But it's going to take some time for us right. to get there. And when we realize that, that every day I live, every day I wake up, there's something new that God wants to do in me. Right. There's some changes that God wants to make. And there's something I need to be concerned with. He says in Psalms 50 and 23, Whoso offereth praise... I just read that one. I copied it down twice. But he says, Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me and to him that ordereth his conversation. David also says, he says... Order my steps right. in your word. Amen. I want to be directed by you. Order my steps right. in your word, God. Mm -hmm. I'm not so interested in just my desires. And when it becomes that way, when your life is all about you and all about your desires, that is also communicating yeah. to people. Right. Your conversation right. is encompassing some selfishness. Right. And when selfishness is in the picture, the love of God is not. That's good. Praise God. It's not. Ephesians 4 and 22 says they, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, the deceitful desires of the flesh, whether that be to promote self. That's the, you know, the biggest thing about it is promoting self. Satan's Lucifer's problem in heaven, it really came down to one thing, promoting himself. He says, I will dis ascend, rather, to the, the throne of the Most High. He wanted to kick God off of his throne. As nonsensical as that seems. But that's what pride will do to you. Pride will make a man shake his fist and curse God. Pride will do that. Pride will do that. I want my conversation, everything that I'm doing in my life, to glorify God. That's it, right. Amen. Everything was Amen. when people look at my life, Thank they're you. evaluating and they're saying, Praise be to God. You know, one of the things that Jesus says is that, that we need to live our life in such a way that men may glorify God because of our good works. Right. Right. How does that happen? Somewhere along the line, you've communicated to that person in some way, shape, or form, maybe even just in verbal communication, but you've said to them that God gets the glory from my life. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I don't live my life for myself. I'm not just doing this just for any other reason, but it's because I serve God. So when people see the works that you're doing, they attribute that to the God inside of you, right. making you who you are. Right. Right. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that God wants to use us. Right. In what we say, we have to be a witness. There has to be some knowledge of, of his word that we need to have, but also the life that we live. If you're driving down, uh, down the street and, you know, somebody cuts you off and you cut them with some words, they may not hear the words because you're, you're in your car and they're in theirs, but they can kind of tell by the expression. Right. You might say, well, they got me upset, they got me mad. There, you know, in the moment, in the heat of the moment, you do what you do. But it's all based on what you've allowed. What you've allowed to be there. And we have to trim that old man down. It's like a tree. You know, the Bible's example is like the old man is like a tree. Cut him down, but the stump is still there. How many know that the stump can still have life in it? And that tree can begin to grow again. I saw a picture, I have it on my phone, of a tree that was... It fell or was struck by lightning or something. It was leaning over completely. And the branches had stuck into the ground and began to grow again. Somehow it, the root system, you know, came from the branches into the ground and the tree started to grow again. And, it, you know, the caption they had under that is, don't ever give up. <laughs> but it's, it's amazing. The life that we live, God's always trying to plant something new there. But your old man never dies. We reckon him dead, but he's still there. As long as you're alive, there's this fight that's going on on the inside, and you control how successful the devil's being by your preparation. The Bible tells us that we need to mortify. That means to kill, to put to death the deeds of the flesh. But it, that only happens when we're, we're allowing ourselves spiritually to grow. Philippians 3.20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in this particular case, the word conversation means citizenship. So he says, Our citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So my citizenship is in heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. And so I'm living down here. The Bible says that we are in the world, but not of the world. There has to be a separation. There has to be a difference between my life and the life everybody else is leading. If we're all doing the same thing, there's something wrong because we're all going to the same place. Regardless of what I think. So there has to be a difference between what I'm doing, my conversation, my, the way that I'm evaluated by people, what they see. Now, I can deceive them, I can trick them, I can do all that kind of stuff, but I'm saying just from a pure heart, the life that I'm living, this is what everybody's evaluating. And this is what's allowing God to use me to affect them or not. 1 Timothy 4 and 12 Paul talking to the young man, Timothy, he said, let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believer in word, in conversation. This is in your lifestyle. In charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Listen, you need to exude faith. You need to exude faith. There's enough things to depress people on a daily basis. Right. Mm -hmm. Every day that we live, somebody's depressed. Right. But somebody needs to know that I need to look upward rather than right. laterally or downward. Right. Because right. so you look, so you are. If you're looking at things that are just here, you're going to be depressed by that and you won't have hope. But when you get your eyes hmm. yeah. and your gaze is fixed northward, Praise God. David says, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Right. He made all of that. God isn't down here with my head down. He's with my head up. Even when things weigh down on me and make me want to put my head down, I'm going to lift my head. I'm going to resist. I'm going to fight against it. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to look to the hills because my help's coming. Wow. 
My help's coming. Yeah. And that's what you have to, you have to realize. My help is coming. Yeah. If, the, if you allow the Satan just to talk to you and say, this is it. You are cornered. You are finished. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's all. Satan, you're a liar. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My God specializes in delivering me. Yes. Amen. Praise God. The hmm. Bible says this poor man cried out to the Lord, and he delivered him from all of his distresses. Right. Praise God. I want God to deliver me, but you know what? I have to get my gaze upward. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. Amen. Because if you allow things to weigh you down, when people see you weighed down, you know, I'm not saying fake it at all. I'm saying get a hold of God. Right. The Bible says this, endure hardness as a good soldier. Life is not supposed to just be so easy and, you know, everything just, you know, every time you walk, everything's just walking on just an easy path. It's not that way. There are going to be some things that challenge you to the max. There's going to be some things that that make you want to quit, make you want to give up. There's going to be people that you're forced to deal with. Hmm. Remember years ago, a man had a neighbor. And this neighbor, he's in church, but this neighbor it was just giving him fits and nightmares. Because the guy had, I think he had a dog. One of them had a dog. I don't remember the story completely. But the neighbor was just very, you know, contentious. And I, he came to me and said, Pastor, I don't know what to do about this. I said, you know, what you have to do is, you, this is an example for you. This is a, a time for you to show the love of God. Hmm, right. to show what's inside of you. That person may never get another chance. Yes, he's being a bonehead. In your mind. Right. Yes, he's being somebody that's hard for you to deal with. But unless you allow the love of God, to, listen, there's there's gonna be test in life. The Bible prepares us for this. He says this is gonna happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's for the reason of developing us for one thing, but it's also to win that person. That's right. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't need a piece of our mind. Right. The Bible tells us, you know, he warns us. You know, we have to take these warnings. Uh, we have to take them seriously and we have to understand that God has given us some insight into what's happening in our life. We don't look at it that way, but you have to start to look sometimes through the spirit lens and not just the flesh. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Well, what I see is flesh and blood. I can pinch or punch that flesh and blood. <laughs> you know, no. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You're missing the point if you take it all out on them. If you allow your flesh to take it out on their flesh. Right. There's something else going on. There's something greater. We don't see that. Many times we don't understand that. It doesn't really compute because we just see a person saying something to us or doing something to us. And we want to react in our flesh. But we have to realize we're not fighting against flesh and blood. And so if I'm not fighting against flesh and blood but it's spiritual warfare, I better through the spirit right, yeah. right. fight against that. Right. And the only way I fight in the spirit is on my knees. That's right. Amen. Prayer is a powerful Amen. thing. It can shake Satan's darkness. Amen. It can shake his arm. It can shake that strategy he has against you. Amen. It can bust that whole thing up. Prayer can. Prayer, right. Prayer right. can. Because the Bible says that when you do good, when you return good for evil... The Bible says it's like putting hot coals on his forehead. Amen. Who can stand that? What he's saying is it's a burning conscience. I'm messing with his head. I'm manipulating his thinking. Right. I'm messing with him. Not for a bad reason, but for a good reason. Because I'm going to just show the love of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people will test you out. Because they are searching for God. It doesn't sound like they're searching for God. It doesn't look like they're searching for God. It just looks like they're being a pest. Yeah, right. But they will test you. Right. And sometimes the most hungry people are tested. And the only way you'll see it and not be in your flesh to just is to realize I'm not fighting against flesh and blood. And you see, every fight isn't just to destroy you. Sometimes the fight is somebody trying to see what's in you. 
You claim to be this and be that. They want to see what's in you. They want to see, does some of that come oozing out or does something else come out? Mm -hmm. Right. The way that God uses us is in interacting with other people. Right. You know, the Catholics, through the years, people that were really devoted, a devoted Catholic, you know, even through the centuries, maybe even through the Dark Ages, especially, they, the, the men would go into what's called a monastery. That'd be a place that was far from other places usually. And they really didn't interact with people. They just got, quote unquote, close to God. Well, God hasn't called anybody to do anything like that. Right? Not perpetually. I can see pulling away from the world for a little bit. We fast and those kind of things. But just living your life totally devoted to God and away from everybody else. Uh-uh. We are in the world to make a difference. Right, the Bible right. says if our gospel be hid, it's hidden to them that are lost. Right. People that are lost have no way to know if everybody that has it stays away. Right. Hmm. But God wants us to interject ourselves, and God will allow circumstances to help us to do that. Hmm. And then what comes against us isn't always something coming against us. It's a soul crying out. Right. God help us. There's a soul crying out in my life. There's somebody that's making my life difficult or somebody that I just can't stand. I just don't know why. But you have to look at it differently. Yeah. The Bible calls us to be fishers of men. Right. You know, in, in Bible days, they fish with a net. Now, the thing about a, a net, you cannot really choose what gets in the net. Right. You might like a certain kind of fish. I would like... Bluefish. I like to go fishing. I remember years ago I went with my father out deep sea fishing. And uh, they, they caught a lot of blues. I said they because I got seasick. <laughs> and I was pretty miserable. But when you throw the net out, you cannot determine what gets in that net. Right. And they drug, they, a lot of times they drag the net. They'll throw it out and for a few miles I'll have it and whatever gets in there. And your life is the same thing. You're going about it, minding your own business, and you meet all types of people with all types of motives, all kind of things going on in their lives. But the Bible says, this is what Jesus says to his disciples, and, and by default to us, that I will make you fishers of men. Right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And the way we're going to fish, the bait we're using, if you will, is our lives. Right. It's our lives. Right. Your life is going to be something that somebody wants to swallow up, someone wants to get close to. Right. That's good. Or it can repel them. Right. I don't want to be anywhere near that kind of person. God help me. Right, right. I, I say this, I say this sincerely. I want to be more like him. I want to be more accessible, more available to God. I don't want to be in my shell. We can get into our shells. Yeah. I know by nature I'm an introvert. I know it might be hard to believe, but I, I am introverted by nature, and I can be a hermit if I wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes the uncomfortableness of stepping outside of yourself. Yeah, that's good. And when you challenge yourself in that way, sometimes, listen, people that are going to be reached by us it's, it's taking advantage of opportunities. God set some things up. Some chance meetings are not chance meetings. God sends us, and he sends them to us. God coordinates things. Sometimes you may have something negative that takes place, so you can go to somewhere where somebody's going to be, and you had no idea. But if you're instant in season and out of season, you can see, you can spot it, you can have your spiritual spidey senses up and know that there's something more to this meeting than just simple circumstances or happenstance. God's brought this meeting to be. Because he has something for me to share. Absolutely. He wants my life to share something. Praise God. Sometimes you have to catch yourself in the midst of being upset. You know, it's too, I, I, when I go to the store, my wife... When we go to a, a, a store and there's salespeople there, I don't know why. But I don't like to be sold. I don't like somebody to grab me and tell me what I'm going to buy and all that. I just leave me alone for a minute. <laughs> Let me absorb what I'm looking at. So if I go to a furniture store or a 
you know, we're shopping for a car, my wife would tell me before I go in there, be nice. Because I, I just, I, I just, I don't like to be sold, but I have to be mindful of that, that, hey, these salesmen, they're trying to make a living, and there, there is, there's something that I may be able to, if I kill my flesh, because there's something that rises up in me, I don't know what that's <laughs> I get into that situation. It's like, I do not want to talk to you for a minute. Let me see what I want to get, if I want to get something. But that's something that I have to check my spirit. Because the need to need that piece of furniture that we're in a furniture store for, that's not just any old thing. David says, order my steps in your word, God. If God is ordering me, and you know, now you know, I, I'm filled with his spirit, and I'm his child. I'm someone he wants to use. Well, my furniture, you know, I need to replace this couch, so I go to the store at this particular time. And God sends somebody in there, or that salesperson in that store. Right. Mm -hmm. Has all kind of junk going on in their life. Right. You know, we were, we were actually shopping for a bed uh, for one of the kids, I guess, uh, for a couple years ago. And, you know, we walked into the store, and, you know, she gave me her little talk, and I said, okay, okay. So we go inside, and, and I, I, you know, I just didn't want to be really bothered. And so we were looking at the beds, and I said, yeah, well, well give us a second. But the salesman, he was it's just one person there. He was the only person. And we got to talking to him. When I got to the cash registers, when the Holy Ghost just really convicted him, he said, you know, um, he, he was just, he was a friendly guy, sharing his life, but then... He let us know that he was, I think he was terminally ill. Yeah, he was terminally ill. And, uh, you know, it just, it's amazing how there can be a complete paradigm shift with just one revelation. Put a bookmark there in that. But Stephen Covey says this. He said that he, in his book, um, Seven Habits, of uh, highly effective people. He says this, that a man gets on a bus and there's a man sitting there and kids that look like they belong to him running around, making noise, throwing paper at people and hitting people with different things, you know, and the kids were just very unruly. The guy sat there for a second and said, you know, I'm waiting for him to say something to these kids and I'm about to say something. And then something else happened. He said, you know, I'm not going to hold my tongue. So he says, why don't you do something about your kids? And the guy says, what? We just left the hospital. Their mother just died. Needless to say, that guy felt about that small. But the man began to talk to us about his situation, what he was dealing with. And you know, the Holy Ghost was just there convicting me, saying, you know, and I, I, I didn't act. I mean, I was, I was pretty good, but I just, I thought about that, leaving that place. You know, I said, you never know what's happening. Right. People are evaluating the conversation that is your life and my life. They're analyzing it. But you and I have got to live in such a way that people are able to be affected in a positive way. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Some things that we don't need to have a part of our conversation because that throws people off. And be content with such things as you have, for he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right. My conversation, the reason I can have contentment, the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. You know why? Because I have God. Right. Right. I have God. And I may be missing some things that, that we many times attribute to having a good life. I may, I may miss some of those things. Paul says, I know how to be abased right. all the way down to the floor. And I know how to abound. God does it all. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God allows my life to have these ups and downs in it in terms of my, my happiness or even things that I may have. Why? God is using me. God gets to use me. When you're sold out to God, your thinking needs to be, God gets to use me. Hebrews 13 and 7 says, Remember them that have the rule over you, 
who have spoken unto you the words of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Paul also says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. So as long as I'm following him, I'm a good role model. That's what it all comes down to. I have to be following him because in following him, I'm going to set the example for everybody else that comes after me. And that's the same thing with you. When you're winning somebody to God, if you've won somebody to God, it, it's not just over when they get baptized in Jesus' name and fill the Holy Ghost. It's then their life that they're patterning after somebody. Right. I forget the scientist that uh, discovered imprinting say, in, in psychology. But he, he, what he did an experiment. He had some ducks that were born, took away the mother. The first thing they saw was him, and he had boots, and he walked, and those ducks all came following after him. People are the same way. When they're one to God, they need somebody to look to. They need a conversation that they can evaluate and say, that's like God, and that's what I want to be like. That's what that's who I want to act like. That's what I want my life to be patterned after. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 2 and 4, 4 through 16 says, 14 through 16 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are a savor unto death and to the other a savor, savor unto life. That word savor means taste. My life is a sweet, all of our lives is a sweet smelling savor to God when we live it like he's told us to live it. Because then we, we put ourselves in a place where God can use us. Yeah. And you know his will. It's not to give everybody a million dollars. But his will is that none should perish. Yeah. There's right. something Praise greater God. than this life. And God is focused right. like a laser on what's important, what comes after this life. Because this is testing grounds. That's all it is. This is testing grounds. And we keep our mind focused like that, realizing that this is testing grounds for eternity. And I've got to affect somebody else so right, I can right. shake them out of, out of their sleep, out of their slumber. Yes. And help them to realize that the most important thing they can do is ready themselves for eternity. Because it's coming at a time when nobody knows it. Hmm. Everybody has a time to go. And you look at the obituaries and you'll see all age groups. Death is the pandemic. And everybody is susceptible to it. We don't know when it's going to happen. But we know one thing's for sure. One thing is inevitable. We're all going to die. I want my conversation to affect somebody's living. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Let's stay in this morning. I want my life to reflect Him. But it takes me being focused. It takes me realizing that when I'm in situations, it's not just me. I'm not dealing with flesh and blood. It's not just about my set of circumstance. There's something greater that's happening right. in every encounter I have in life Thank with you. others. There's something greater happening. There's something bigger happening. I want my life to be a winning conversation. Right. Praise God. Thank I want my Lord. life to be a winning conversation Thank that you. speaks volumes to people, that says this is the way, walking in it. Right. Praise God. God needs somebody to be Lord, that example, sure to be God. that light, to be that Help person that people can attach themselves to and say, hey, you're going to heaven, I want to go. God needs some warriors. God needs some people that have put, made it up in their minds that it doesn't matter what everybody else does. There's something I have to do. Right, right. Amen. I've got to crucify this flesh. Take up my cross. And I've got to be like him. In every situation, realizing that people are analyzing me. They are evaluating my conversation. My life. My choices. My behaviors. My reactions. 
All of these things. You know, sometimes we look at things and we say, I'm not back a thousand or anywhere near in that particular area. But he's still working on me. That's it. Right, right. He's training me. Amen. He's molding me. Oh, he's making me. But at the same I time, people are watching me. Have your yeah, Praise God. Everybody in this place has family that you want to be saved. Amen. Everybody has somebody that we need, we want to see make it to heaven. Everybody has somebody that you love and you have exhausted your own means of telling them. Thank you, Jesus. And it seems like they don't listen. Thank you, Lord. Well, they're watching. They're evaluating you. Yeah. They're evaluating you. You never know when it's going to happen. My wife's sister, many years ago, my wife got in church when she was in college. And uh, her sister, her sister, she lived, came to the same city where my wife was at after my wife graduated from college and uh, actually moved in with her for a little bit. And, uh, but she, did no changes. She might have visited church once or twice, but maybe a couple more times than that, but no, no changes, no, no real big thing. I met my wife, we got married, and then she moved out of state, of course, to Texas. And one night, her sister called. She had a dream. And her dream was about end times, eschatology kind of thing. She had heard something, something got a hold of her. And she says, I, I want to go to church. And she had moved back to my wife's hometown. And so we didn't know the pastor. We didn't know um, anybody there, I don't think, at that time. And so we began to give her, you know, some information on the phone. But we said, you know, let's get a Bible study. Let me call the pastor that's near you. And there's a pastor, of course, in Asheville. We called her. And she goes and she went for the Bible study. Got the Holy Ghost. Got baptized. In church. And it was just out of nowhere, it seemed. But no, 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 no. There was a life being evaluated. There was a life being analyzed. She knew her sister when she lived at home. Then she went and moved up where her sister was at. And she watched her. A different person. It was making an impression. It didn't seem like it. It didn't seem like anything was happening. But the lifestyle, the conversation, was speaking volumes to her. God was softening her up for the moment that he would hit her with that dream. Boom! Then she's ready to wilt. Your life is speaking volumes. You may think it's not, but if you're praying and talking to God about somebody, God is using you. They may seem so resistant to your efforts, but God is using you. God will give us wisdom but at the same time, I will work on them. The Bible says, with cords of love have I drawn thee. The Bible also says that without God drawing, they cannot come. Amen. He's skillful with If he says, listen, it's not as well that any should perish, but that all may come to repentance. That's God's will. That's what he desires. Yeah. But you know that's a very difficult thing? For everybody would be repenting right now today. Yeah. This church would be packed full. God uses the combination of his drawing through us. Right, right. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Lord, I want to be a vessel. My, I want my conversation, God. I want it to speak volumes to somebody. Lord, you know who's being affected by my life right now. You know who they are, God. Help me to have a sensitivity, Lord. God, help me, Lord God, so you can use me, Lord God. Use me, God. Use me, God. Hallelujah. I want my life, Lord, to be a sweet, smelling savor. You're perfect, God. To somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you, Lord, to use me, God, to draw somebody, Lord, in my family. 
I want you right now to get a person in your mind, in your family, or maybe among your friends. Hallelujah. All eyes are closed and heads are bowed right now. I want you to think of somebody. Get that person in your mind. Hallelujah. They seem so difficult. They seem like they're impossible to reach. Get that person in your mind. Because sometimes we're reading them wrong. We're reading it wrong. We're reading it through the flesh. And God says there's something greater in the spirit that's taking place. I'm working on them. I'm drawing that person. I'm doing a work that you can't see. You have to trust me. And you have to be the person that I want you to be. Hallelujah. Because your life is being read. It's being evaluated. It's being analyzed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got that person in your mind? Let's ask God right now. Hallelujah. God, draw that person. Draw them, Lord God. Hallelujah. Call their name out. Hallelujah. God, draw that person. Hallelujah. God, touch my brother Julius, Lord God. Touch my brother Jesse, Lord God. Have your way in their lives, Lord God. Draw my cousin Caesar, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God, in Sabrina, Lord, in Stanley and Sherwood's lives, Lord God. Touch my name, Lord God. Touch Linda and Diane, God. Have your way in their lives, God. Draw them, Lord, by your spirit, God. Have your way, God. You know what my conversation is being, what my life is being read and analyzed as, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would draw them, Lord. Have your way, God. Use me, God. Hallelujah. Change me, Lord God. Help me to be what you need me to be, God. Hallelujah. As they evaluate my life, as they look at my life, God. Have your way. Have your way, God. God can reach that person. God can reach that family member. God can reach that son or daughter. God can reach that mother or father. God can reach that aunt or uncle. God can reach that friend, that best friend, hallelujah. God can reach that person that seems that they're so lost. God can reach them that he's doing it through you. Your life is speaking volumes. Your life is saying something to them. Your life is communicating, hallelujah. The full body of your testimony is saying something to them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. struggles, Lord God. Use my pain, Lord God. Hallelujah. Use my life, Lord God, to draw. Hallelujah. Use me, Lord God. Have your way. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Nobody's perfect this morning. Everybody needs more of God. I know I do. Hallelujah. Let's just talk to God this morning. Hallelujah. God, use me, Lord God. You know those branches, God, that need to be smoothed out in my life, God. Help me, Lord God, with my area of weakness, God. Places that I need work, God. You and I know those things, God. Hallelujah. The surgeon is in the room today. If your heart has been anesthetized, the surgeon is in the room today to do some work, to cut away something that perhaps should not be there. Hallelujah. To repair some things on the inside. The surgeon is in the room. Hallelujah. The great physician is here to work on your heart. Hallelujah. As you're lying there. Hallelujah. He's going to do some things as you make yourself available to him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. You're on the throne, God, and your plan for my life, your purpose for my life is what matters, God. I want to be a part, Lord God, of your solution. I want to have a winning conversation. Hallelujah, God. I want to have a winning conversation. Hallelujah. God looked at Job as he was talking to Satan. And Job's life became the communication or became the conversation that God spoke to Satan about. Have you considered my servant Job? God knew what he had invested 
And he watched the life of Job. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, I want my life, Lord God, to be an example that you can brag on, that you can talk about, that you can put me in circumstances and situations, Lord, to give glory, to bring glory to your name, that a soul can be reached, Lord God, through my importunity, Lord God. Hallelujah. Through situations in my life, God, that souls can be reached, Lord God, because I've gone through. Hallelujah. Use me, Lord God. Use me for your service, for your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just sing this song. I will give you all hallelujah. Because that's what God desires. That's, God can only work when he has it all in his hands. Hallelujah. I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you've asked of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, let me remember Calvary's test, be willing to say yes. Oh, I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you've asked of me, I will not withhold. And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, let me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship you today. God, there's some hearts in here, God, that are saying yes. There's some people that are rising up to the challenge and are saying yes, God. Oh, God, I want my life, my conversation, Lord God. To speak volumes to somebody, Lord, that draws them to you, that brings them, Lord, to repentance. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have your way today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you this morning. We honor you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are going to, as soon as we are uh, finished with this um, this series on Wednesday nights, we are going to, I'm going to talk about fasting. I want to go deeper into that because at the first of the year, we want to do a, a Daniel's fast for um, probably about three weeks. And I'll talk to you about that. I want to prepare everybody really, really well for that um, just so that we can we can follow it through and carry it out. Because I, I believe there's something powerful that happens when you fast. Yeah. Right. The thing about Daniel's fast is that Daniel is the one that put the time frame on it. He just said three weeks. And he chose the diet. Now his wasn't a full, you know, no food eating diet but fast. But he, had, he ate. There were certain things he didn't eat. Um, but we want to talk about that and prepare everybody for that because I want I want to get I want this next year I really want to get deeper in God. Amen. Does anybody feel that way? Amen. I want to get deeper in God. And you, you don't get deeper in God without all those elements that concern themselves with our maintenance and our spiritual development yeah. being exercised. Yeah. You have to exercise those things. Praise God. And we're going to talk about that, but praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, for your wonderful people, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in every life, every situation. Hallelujah, Lord. You know, God, the hard things in life, God, you're not absent from. 
For your word declares that you're a very present help in the time of trouble. But sometimes you wait because you're letting it all come together. You know what you're doing. And we thank you, Lord God, that it's you that makes the decisions for our life. For your word declares that you are the author and the finisher of the book of our life, of our faith, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're writing the story. You know all the climatic highs, Lord, and the deep lows, Lord, that we go through, Lord God. But, Lord, through it all, you're the one that gives us the strength, Lord, to survive it all, Lord. And not just to survive, to thrive. For you're the God of abundance. You're the one that's able to do it exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in you. God, I pray that you would touch your people. Help us, Lord. God, as we face our our week this week, Lord, I pray, Lord, for every challenge, Lord, that you would meet, Lord, that you would show yourself mighty in your people's lives today. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Praise God. Shake hands. Every tear is an ocean, and every hurt is a mountain, and every cry is a siren, hopes are halfway to dying, where do we run? 
When the bullets are flying And the bombs keep on falling When there's fear all around me And it feels like we're drowning Where do we run? Lord, we will wait on you Yes, we will wait on you You are still on your throne Still in control Lord, we will wait on you Yes, we will wait on you You are the only hope So we won't let go We will wait, we will wait, we will wait We admit that we've stumbled And we've all gone astray So we humble our hearts And let down our guards We're seeking your It's like the whole world's got a cancer And we die a little more every day And all the while there's an answer And it's there in us right in the face The trumpet will sound The sun will shine dim As your glory shines down All knees will bow Every tongue will proclaim That you are Through sickness and pain, through trials we face, through war and through loss, we won't lose faith with our hands lifted high. We look to the sky, in you we remain, on you we will wait. Through sickness and pain, through trials we face, through war and through loss, no, we won't lose faith with our hands lifted high. know a place where we can go